Hello and welcome to a new video on cryptography for everybody. We already had videos about different modern ciphers, like the advanced encryption standard or the data encryption standard. We also had a video about Ghost Magma, which is the Soviet and Russian standard cipher, or was the standard cipher. And in this video today, we will have a look at a Chinese cipher, namely the SM4 cipher. In the video, you learn how the cipher works, and we will see how it works in Crypt 2, how you can encrypt and decrypt using Crypt 2. I structured this video into five different parts. In the first part, I will give you a brief overview of the history of the SM4 block cipher. Then you will see an overview of how the cipher works. Then we will have a look in detail at the so-called round function of the cipher followed by the key expansion. And finally, as I already said, we will do it in Crypto 2, we will encrypt and decrypt using the SM4 cipher. Shangmi 4, and excuse me if I pronounce it uh, wrong, is originally named SMS4 and is a block cipher standard adopted by the government of the People's Republic of China. SM4 algorithm was drafted by Data Assurance and Communication Security Center and Commercial Cryptography Testing Center, National Cryptography Administration of China. The cipher is mainly developed by Lü Shuweng and it was released by the National Cryptography Administration on March 21st, 2012 under the standard GMT 0002-2012 SM4 block cipher and as I said, originally published as SMS4. SM4 became a national standard of China, GB T32907 2016 in August 2016. The cipher is primarily used for data encryption in commercial cryptography systems. SM4 has an algorithm that is public with both the block and key size being 128 bits. And on this particular cipher, we will have a look now. SM4 is a symmetric block cipher. That means you need for encryption and decryption only one key. The key size is 128 bit. And the block size is also 128 bit. The cipher performs a total of 32 rounds. And the structure of the cipher, as you will see, is an unbalanced Feistel network. The used S-box size is 8-bit for input and 8-bit for output. That means we have a 256-byte table. And the cipher text plain text is split into four blocks or words, each of 8 byte. And in each round, the first block is XORed with the result of an F function. You can see here the Overview of the cipher. Here's one round, then we have a second round, and we have a third round, and so on. So the plain text or the input text, also the cipher text, is split into four parts. Then the first three, uh, the second three parts here are shifted to the left. So the second part in the previous round becomes the first, the third part becomes the second, and the third part becomes the fourth. And the first part of the text is XORed with the result of a so-called F function. The F function is based on the round key of that round and on the XOR of all the other parts of the plain or cipher text you're currently encrypting or decrypting. And then this block here goes to the end. So this is the unbalanced part of this Feistel network. You have three parts going to the left and one part going to the right. In a balanced Feistel network, you would have one part to the left, one part to the right, and then they will change. And here's the same again. So we have a second round, a third round, fourth round, fifth round, and so on, until we have 32 rounds in total. Now let's have a look at the round function or F function. And the round function gets as an input these four parts, as we have seen before, x0, x1, x2, x3. And as a result, we get x4, and we also need the round key. We can see this here. We have x0, x1, x2, x3 as inputs to the F function here. And we have as an output here 
x4. And what does the f function do? The f function first XORs x1, x2, x3 and the round key. That's what we can see here. And then this goes in a so-called t function. And the result of the t function then is XOR with x0 and then the x4 is the result of that. And what is the t function? The t function is an L function of a tau function of x. And what does that mean? That x, what we get in, is the x ring of all these previous x's here and the round key. And the, the L function here xors this input with left circular shifted versions of the x. So we have x shifted to the left two times, x shifted to the left 10 times, 18 times, and 24 times. And all these values are then xored. And after that, we get our result here. And inside the L function, so the x that goes into the L function here, is first fed through the tau function. And the tau function is basically, or this is a lookup of the S boxes. So our value is split into bytes because the S box can only work on bytes. And then we have S box of the first byte, the second byte, the third byte, the fourth byte, so 0, 1, 2, 3. And these are concatenated again to get an x value. How these two functions work in detail, we will see on the next slides. First of all, let's have a look at the non-linear tau function, the most inner function of what I have previously shown to you. And this is the S-box lookup. We can see here S-box byte 0, 1, 2, and this here is 3 behind the table. Here you can see the S-box. The S-box, as I have previously said, is a lookup table of 256 entries. And what you do when you encrypt using the tau function, you do a lookup for the first byte here. So we have, for, for example, 0, 5 here. So we look for 0 and 5, and here we have our value, and we write our value here. Then we do the same, for instance, for the value AF, and these are hexadecimal values, of course. And with AF, we go here to A, we go to F, and we see 6F. The same for B2, we get 3, 7. The same for C7, we get 7F. And then we concatenate all these byte values to get the output of the tau function. Now let's have a look at the linear or L function. And as I said, the L function is the XOR of the original value with a 2-shifted, 10-shifted, 18-shifted, and 24-shifted version of itself. And it's circular shifted. That means when we shift out bits, they go back into our register from the right side. Here's an example. Our original x value, for instance, is this value here. And to make it easier to see how the shifting works, I mark the left part of the shift red and the right part purple. Of course, in the first version here of the x, the original x, we don't have any shifting. Here we have a shift by two. So we shifted all the bits to the left. And these two zeros here then go back into our shift register here. We do the same with 10. Now we start here, we go until the end, and then the remaining bits are shifted again into the register. Same for 18 and same for 24. We have these four circular shifts, and then we XOR all these values here. So we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, XOR, this is 0. Then we have three zeros, uh, three ones. This is an odd number, so we get a 1. We have 1 and 1, this is an even number of ones, then we get a 0. We have here again four ones, this is an even number, we get 0, and so on. So we XOR all these intermediate values, and this is the result of our linear function. Now let's have a look at the key expansion of SM4. And the key expansion basically works more or less the same as the original cipher itself, but in a slightly different way, as you will see. First, the cipher uses a master key MK, which is 128 bit or four words of four bytes. And it uses constants to generate 32 round keys that we call RK. The constants are FK. These are four words of four bytes. Look up table. I don't show these here. If you want to see them, you have to look in the standard. Then we have the constant CK. These are 32 words of four bytes lookup table. These are used during the key expansion. And we need two arrays, an array K. This is just 
an internal memory that we can later get rid of. We don't use it anymore. And we get RK. These are 32 words of four bytes. These are our round keys. That's why it's abbreviated RK. First in the key expansion, we initialize the first four values of our K array, K0123, by taking the master key here, 0123, and we XOR it with the constants FK0, 1, 2, and 3. This is the initialization or start of the key expansion. Then du during the generation of the round keys, we just use this simple equation here. So the ith round key is the same as the, yeah, the fourth entry or the fifth entry, where we start off with, um, with zero, we have zero, one, two, three, and then four. This is the fifth entry of the K array. And this is the KI XOR with a T dash function of ki plus 1, xor ki plus 2, xor ki plus 3, xor with the constants. Here in this, the i goes from 0 to 32 since we need 32 round keys. Now the t dash here is similar to the previously shown t function, but with the same tau. So we use the same, uh, the same s box lookup as in the cipher, but we use a different l, uh, an l dash. And the L dash here uses circular shifts only of 13 and 23, instead of the four different circular shifts we use in the cipher. So the L dash function of X is X, XOR, then a 13 circular shifted version of X, XOR, a 26 circular shifted version of X. Now that we know how the cipher works, let's encrypt and decrypt using our newly implemented SM4 cipher component of Crypto2. I'm here now in the current Lightly build of Crypto2 version 9778.1, and I want to show you how we can use the SM4 cipher in Crypto2. And to do so, I create a new workspace. Then we want to encrypt text, so let's input a text input for plain text. This will be our plain text. Oops. Plain text. Hello world. This is a test of the SM4 cipher of Crypt2.2. Then we take cipher component SM4. And we have to convert here. So we need some decoders. Or one decoder here first. And this decoder converts from text UTF-8 to a crypt2 stream. And now we can connect our cipher component. We set this to encryption and electronic codebook is fine for as an example. And the padding we set to zeros. Now we also want to decrypt. So I copy this component here, change it to decrypt. And then we need two text outputs here. We want to have a text output that shows our cipher text. And we want to have a text output that shows our plain text. Or our decrypted plain text. Then we need some encoders to convert from crypt2 stream to string. And since the cipher text is, uh, consists of non-printable characters, I change this here to hexadecimal. And then I need a second one of this. And here we want to see text UTF-8 since our decrypted plain text is UTF-8 text. And we also connect these. Now all is left. What we need to do is to connect an additional text input for a key. And we need to convert again, but this time to byte array for the key input. And then we need as an input hexadecimal. And I change this here, its name to key. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen. I and ah, we need the zero, 00 at the beginning. Now we have 16 bytes, which are 128-bit 
um, of key. Clearly, this, this is a bad key, but as an example, I think it's fine. And when we press now play, you can see that the hello world text here is encrypted by the first SM4 cipher and then of course shown as a hexadecimal text here. So we have these hex values here and then again it's decrypted. We can also use um, cipher block chaining as a block mode which is a little more secure. So we connect again, I just copy my key here, I change it to IV and basically we could use the same, but for fun, let's change it a little. And then we change here to cipher block chaining and cipher block chaining. We can also change the padding mode to PKCS7 and here again, PKCS7. So this component supports different chaining modes and different padding modes as all of our modern uh, ciphers in Crypto2 do. Let's press play again. Yeah, and now of course we have a different cipher text, but encryption and decryption still works. Yeah, and this is everything I wanted to show you in this short video. I gave you a brief overview of the SM4 um, cipher that is uh, used in China. And we now implemented it in Crypto2, so you can also um, use it in Crypto2 now. You saw the building blocks, the structure of the cipher, that it's an unbalanced Feistel network that it uses 32 rounds. And if you want to really understand how the cipher works, I suggest you should implement it on your own. When I learn new ciphers, the first thing I do, I take the standard and I try to implement these. And after I've implemented these in code, then I really understand the internal workings. Yeah, and as I said, this is everything I wanted to show you in this video. I hope you liked it. If yes, please give a thumbs up. Also, if you did not yet subscribe to this channel, please do so. This really helps me to grow the channel to make Crypto2 more popular. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.